Hi everybody, welcome to our painting class. So I'm not outside today, I am inside my little painting studio. Um, uh, but I can see out my window and I can see the beautiful colors outside. And I am so looking forward to painting this. I've actually been looking forward to it all, all semester. So um, the one that we're gonna be doing today is the wildflower study here. And I'm gonna bring this over. So I'm just hiding behind the camera here, but hopefully you can hear me. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this painting. Uh, I'm going to put it here next to my canvas so that I can see it as I paint. And it might slip down, but that's all right. So um, this painting here that we'll be working on today, and you've got your reference photo coming to you if you're getting your kit shipped um, with your canvas. Uh, I'll put that in there. Or um, if you've already picked it up, get it out and let's do a 60-second observation of our reference. So um, in our reference here, I see really vivid colors and that's one of the reasons why I really love this piece. I also love the um, impressionistic style. So that's a new word if you've never heard of it. It's called impressionism. And impressionism is a style of painting in which the painter doesn't focus on the contour or the outline of the things that they're painting, but they focus more on the colors and shadows. So um, Renoir, Monet, Degas, Mary Cassette, those are all really uh, famous impressionistic painters that I love. Um, and actually, you know, I don't know who painted this. It does kind of look like a Renoir, but I don't know. I'll have to look it up. Okay, so um, in this painting, you'll notice the different features. We've got this beautiful fluffy clouds in the sky and then the distant um, trees and that manor house way far away. Can you see that between the trees? And then you've got um, these hills, and these hills are um, covered in different wildflowers. So I see yellow, I see lavender, I see a light blue, and I see this beautiful orangish red, which I think looks like a poppy. And then if you look really closely, you'll see some people walking there in the front and also in the back over there. Okay, so um, we were, we're, we'll get to the people. If you um, don't want to do the people, you don't have to, but I'm going to show you how to do the, the ones walking in the front there because it's really, um, I think it adds a really nice element to the picture. But if you just want to stick with the landscape, you're welcome to do that. Okay, so when you get your canvas, it's going to look like this. And you know I always pre-sketch the canvas out just to give you a general layout of the composition. So as you can see here, um, I really need some tape to get that to stay. But as you can see, we've got the hill that ends about here. So about a third of this picture is sky. Okay, and then this slight slant of the hill here. This hill's kind of rolling and it, it, this house back here really is far away. So these hills are kind of just rolling as they go. Oh, and this right here, guys, this is a little hole in my canvas. Don't worry about that. Um, I cannot get my hands on canvases right now. A lot of the stores are closed. Joanne's only has like a few hours they're open every day or online. It's, you know, um, a few weeks to ship. So anyway, I just used this one in my garage that got a hole in it. Cause I'm not going to let you guys use it. So that's what that is. So don't worry about that. That's not a sketch or anything. If you can tell, that's just a little puncture there. Okay. So let's start with the um, painting. Whenever we do a painting, we always want to start with the thing that's farthest away. So in this picture and with most paintings, obviously it's the sky. Uh, so the sky in this one is so vivid. It's really a beautiful color. If you notice behind the clouds there, the top portion of the sky is a bit darker and then it starts to lighten just slightly into that vivid uh, sky blue. I really like it. And it also kind of brings out and matches the umbrella here and it contrasts with the warm colors that are in the meadow, this red and the yellow. So I love that color. So go ahead and um, select a few colors that you um, would like to use for your sky. It doesn't matter really, you know, I'm gonna go with this one. This is a turquoise blue. If you um, are using paints at home, don't worry too much about this. Of course, if you wanna practice getting your color matches, then absolutely do so. Take your time and get your color matches. I'm gonna go ahead and go with the Carillion blue hue and the turquoise blue. Okay, and um, just like what I tell my students when we're painting together outside, don't be um, too picky about this. Okay, so here, this is our blue straight from the bottle, and um, it's very dark. 
Okay, so what you can do is scoop up some of this white, and what I like to do is lighten it as I come down this canvas here. Okay, I like to mix a lot of my colors right on my canvas, and what that does is it enables my paint to really have this organic flow as I go. You can mix it on your palette like this, but you're not, you're going to lose some of that um, gradient color as it starts to transition down. See that? See, if I just pre-mix it, I'm not going to have all those different colors. So I like to put my dark color right along the top here, and I'm working quickly because this is not um, one of the most important parts of the picture, right? This is the sky, so I'm, I know I'm going to add lots of texture and clouds. So I'm not bathing this. I'm just getting my paint on. And I'm kind of just mixing it like this. A little bit of the white in my brush. I'm kind of blending it with some of that up there. Now you notice this big tree here? Go ahead and paint right through that. I know it's sketched on your canvas, but I want you to paint behind it because if you don't, when we go back to do the foliage and the leaves, you're going to notice that um, you're going to need to make your tree really solid. Okay, you're not going to be able to see little pieces of the sky through it if you don't paint behind it. So you want to make sure you just paint that in. Okay guys, so let's start uh, talking about the technique with the um, round brush here. So your round brush, this is what a round brush looks like. This is what a flat brush looks like. Can you see that? Flat, and I'm using a round. So the round brush is a really great paint brush to do impressionism because it's not going to um, create a lot of repetitive patterns on my picture. Okay, so as you can see here, do you see all this texture that I've got here? I've got this little bit of texture. I don't want to paint my picture like this. Side stroke, side stroke, do, 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 do. So perfectly that all of my colors disappear and they blend together. That's being too careful. Do you see how careful I'm being? Side, 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 side. That's too careful for this type of style painting. So what I want you to do instead is pick up some of that white and then look what happens. As I add white to this, it's gonna start to change and mix. Look at that. See all that? That looks great. Now I don't wanna leave it that, um, uh, those little strokes here too thick. I wanna kind of work them in. So I'm, I'm moving my brush quickly, but I'm doing this little stroke side to side to make these little strokes. Just like this, I'm gonna kind of blend up and I'm gonna pull my paint down. I'm gonna kind of let that blend together a little bit. I'm not being a perfectionist. I'm just kind of letting these colors naturally and organically kind of take the shape that they want. Now, once I get to about halfway down the sky, I'm gonna to start to incorporate that turquoise color. So I've got my turquoise here, and this is super dark for this portion. So I am gonna add some white right here on my palette, and I'm going to mix that turquoise in. Oh, I love this color, it's really pretty. Okay, now I'm gonna bring this to the canvas and I'm gonna start on the white part of the canvas that has not had any paint on it yet. But then as the two colors come in contact with each other, I'm gonna just gently sweep across in these little sweeping motions, do, 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 side, 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 and dance the two colors into each other so that they start to blend. See that? See how beautifully that blends? And I actually wanna add some more white down here and lighten this even more. Okay, now I'm gonna dance all the way down in between these trees I've got, around the house that's sketched, okay? And these um, lower trees are really quite thick, so you're not gonna to need to paint. You can leave those parts unpainted. You can just kinda of come next to them with the blue. And when we go back and pounce that tree, it's okay if there's no blue behind it because they're really, um, there's not a lot of, um, branches where you can see the sky through them. So um, do you see all this texture that I've got in this blue um, sky and I've got these little strokes here of color that are blending together and I'm just kind of dancing these colors together before this paint dries, okay? I'm not babying it, I'm not uh, being too careful. I'm just kind of having fun with this. Side, side strokes just like this and they're kind of little sweeping strokes. You could even tilt your brush this way and do some this way in one stroke. I, I, per I like to do this because I think it's a more organic movement and I can't control it as well, which is kind of what I want here. I don't really want to control my movements too much because then it's going to look stiff. And you don't want that in Impressionism. Okay, so I'm working quickly here because I want to get this paint on. I'm going to pick up some more white and dance that in. I want to get all this paint on before it dries. 
because acrylic, we're using acrylic just like we always do, acrylic paint, you know, it has about 10 minutes before it dries. So um, I like to work quickly. Um, and, you know, sometimes I do layers, but for this painting, for this guy, we'll be doing mostly this technique here, not too much wet on wet. Um, I am going to paint, this is my big tree here, okay? I'm going to paint a little bit into it like that, because this part here is fine, that's solid green. But as I put my branches out there, I want to be able to see the sky behind it. So I'm going to paint some of my sky in there, um, and kind of put that on top of where that tree is going to go. Okay, here we go again on this side. I've got my lighter blue, this baby blue, and then I've got the teal in my brush. So I'm gonna come and paint on this white part of the canvas. And then I'm gonna start to dance it up like this and mix it in just like this. Side, side, strokes just like this. Little tiny, like, you know, side, uh, like a little U shape. A U going back and forth and just kind of dance those colors together. Once here, then I'm gonna move over here, and over here, and over here. If I sit here and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, I'm gonna mix all my colors together and I'm gonna have this big solid piece of new paint color that's not gonna you know, blend in with the rest. So I don't wanna sit there and do that for very long. Okay, make sure you come all the way to the edge. I, I just wanna do it enough to get paint on my canvas. I don't wanna overwork it and then I wanna leave it. Okay, so as you can see here, We've got a lot of really nice texture in the sky. So um, while my paint is still wet, I'm gonna wash out my brush and I'm gonna get some white because we're gonna do these clouds. Now in our reference photo, we see a lot of this gray in the cloud. I do like that, um, but I think I'm gonna stick with some of this blue. So let's start with white. And what I'm gonna do is I see over here, um, there's a larger cloud in here. Now I <clears throat> need to be careful that when I do this cloud that I don't make it like a cotton ball. Okay, when we're doing impressionism, we want to make sure that we don't have shapes that are like patterns. We don't want circle, 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 like Mickey Mouse, you know, or Minnie Mouse polka dots. We want to make sure that the clouds look like they're breaking apart and they're floating and kind of dissolving away or into each other. So I'm going to add a little bit of a shape here. There's a kind of a nicest big cloud there. And I'm going to um, press my brush up against my canvas like this. And I'm not too concerned if the blue mixes with my white. It's going to give me that gray color and the diversity of the color that I want in those clouds. Okay, now if it starts to mix too much, then I just need to come down here and wipe my brush onto my paper towel and pick up some clean white again. Okay, this is called a wet on wet technique. It means I have wet paint in my brush and I have wet paint on my uh, canvas. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently come in here and see how I'm just kind of dancing my brush around really quickly. I'm not babying my picture. I'm not thinking too hard about this. I mean, there's so many clouds in this sky and they're really low. There's actually a lot of clouds down here around these trees. So I'm really not too concerned about the shapes. I'm going to get some of that blue because this was really wet paint there. So I'm going to get some of the blue out of here. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean. I'm not too worried about it. I'm just going to pick up some more white here. And I'm going to dance around my brush. And oops, there's too much water there. And I'm going to create some low clouds here behind these trees. And it's okay if it mixes a little bit with my blue. I'm just going to wipe off my brush, get some more white, and bring it back to my canvas. Okay, so do you see this overall texture that we've created here? Do you see how you can see all these rich blue colors into this white cloud? That's exactly what we want, okay? So if your cloud is starting to have a little bit of this blue in it like that, that's exactly what you want, all right? Don't worry. There's also a cloud kind of up in the upper left corner of this picture, so I'm going to add one there. And then as my cloud comes out and meets this one, I'm going to kind of add little wisps of the cloud that are kind of breaking off and floating away, okay? And what I do um, at the edges here is very gently, I'll take my brush and just softly dance my brush around the outside of the cloud and it will soften the edge. Now, if I want to add some brighter parts to that cloud, which I do, I'm going to bring some white back and brighten that up a little bit. Okay. So do you see that? The general fluffiness of that cloud there. 
Okay, so we need to do that across this whole sky. And if this is a good time to do it right now while our paint is still wet. So this is going to be a ginormous tree, the, the one here that goes all the way up. But I can see some clouds kind of floating behind it here. And what I'm doing with my brush is um, I'll do it really slowly. I'm pressing my brush and then lifting it. Pressing it and lifting it very quickly. See that? Pressing it and lifting it. Okay. And um, that's going to help me create this fluffy cloud texture without having to like draw an outline of the cloud. Because remember, we're doing impressionism. So we're not really focusing on the outlines of these clouds. We just want to get the, sh um, the shapes on our canvas by looking at the light and the shadows and the colors. Okay, so I'm going to wash out my brush again, pick up some more white. Okay, and I, I'm working on this low cloud here. This is actually humongous. This cloud comes all the way across. It looks like rain. <laughs> looks like there's going to be rain this afternoon. As soon as these come overhead where these... Oh yes, and she does have her umbrella. That may be a rain umbrella instead of a sun umbrella. So let's get this big rain cloud in here. And it's all right that it's mixing with that blue. That is creating a really beautiful color. And that's what I want. Okay, I'm just coming in here and I'm adding with the same gentle strokes this soft cloud. Now if you choose to add some gray, you're welcome to do that. Um, I don't actually have gray and acrylic. Uh, using black is just kind of something I don't usually do um, with painting. Um, I usually like to use color for my shadows, so that's just my personal preference. Um, but you, if you have gray or black paint and you want to mix some gray and add a little bit of gray in here, you're welcome to do that. There's also some really pretty gray clouds up here. Okay, but I'm just going to um, add this last kind of large, kind of looks like a heart. A little bit of a heart cloud up here. Kind of comes around like this. Okay. Pouncing, really soft, pressing and lifting and creating these really soft little dancing strokes. Okay, now I've got these kind of um, obvious shapes here. And if you notice in our reference photo, it's really, uh, it's more muted than that. And the reason why it's more muted is because do you see all these little tiny pieces in the sky that have like where the clouds have broken off and kind of start to float this way and that way. Just like if you watch clouds in the sky, you know how they change every few minutes. Well, that's what's happening here. So I need to add some of that in here. I'm going to add a little bit of a uh, wisp, cloud wisp that kind of comes off this way. So let me get some white paint and this little wisp is going to kind of break off in here. And I'm just kind of, see how I'm twirling my brush? I'm just kind of twirling my brush and I'm getting some of the paint off of my brush. And then what I can do is I can go back and just very gently blend where the white and the blue meet very gently. I'm barely touching the canvas with just the tip of this paintbrush. Okay, <clears throat> very, very softly, just blending those colors together. This is actually really fun. So just take your time and kind of just, I'm not gonna get any new white paint because really this isn't that white. It's kind of like a grayish cloud, these little wisps. See that? They're kind of gray. They're not really that white. I mean, they kind of look white with that blue sky behind it, but uh, they're not they're not white at all. Okay, so I'm going to add some wisps up here. <clears throat> now, when you're painting a picture, you want the picture to expand off of this canvas so that when the viewer looks at the painting, the viewer's imagination <clears throat> is already imagining what's up around the canvas. So if we just fit the little clouds down here and we don't make it look like the clouds are floating off the canvas, then the viewer is going to think our picture is kind of stuck and trapped on this little square here. But it's not. Our picture is bigger than the canvas. We're just painting one portion of it. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just add a few more um, little wisps coming off of this cloud. And um, I'm using the texture of my brush here. Okay, I'm not reloading my brush. I'm kind of using the dryish kind of paint here and I'm just kind of rubbing it. Now, do you see all that texture that that's creating? Let me see if I can lift up my canvas and bring it to you a little bit. 
Do you see all the texture that this is creating using a dry brush that's kind of just rubbing it and pulling? It's creating these really beautiful cloud wisps. See that? And I'm just using this tore up brush here to do that. Okay, so pulling some paint and just dancing it out and breaking up those clouds. Okay, I see I need to do that here because that from a distance that stands out a little too much for me. And also over here, I kind of want this to be a little bit softer. So I'm going to dance my brush around up there. I can feel the paint in my brush getting pretty dry. So I'm going to go ahead and wash that out. Remember, always keep the brushes in the water when you're uh, not using them. Okay. All right. So now let's move on. Our sky is, um, I like the way this looks. I like that it's not too careful. You know, it's really loose and very impressionistic. All right, so after we've done the sky, we're gonna move on to the next portion. And it's going to be the trees along this back ridge. So the colors that you're gonna need are a, a dark, rich green. So I've got some greens over here. These are lime greens, but um, we don't need those now. But what you can use is a sap green. Sap green is a standard green that you can find in most paint um, stores or like if you bought like a paint kit that had a lot of different paints in it, um, it'll have, it, usually it'll have sap green in it. And then uh, to mix with sap, we're gonna use umber. There's burnt umber or there's raw umber. Burnt umber is um, more of a gray brown. Oh, I'm sorry, burnt umber is more of a red. Raw umber is more of a gray. So I've got burnt umber here. So those two colors are what we're going to need to do this tree line here. Okay. And uh, the tree here, you can see there's like this glowy kind of brown around the tree. It's really pretty. So we're going to use the umber for that. And then uh, our little manor house is nestled in between these trees. So, you know, I'm going to do the manor house next. So um, the brushes that you have, you're going to have your round brushes. Um, probably two sizes of round brushes. We'll see. Um, either way, with most impressionistic paintings, you can paint the entire painting with one brush. And a lot of early artists did that because they had to make their own brushes. There wasn't an art store where they could go, you know, pick up really nice brushes. So they had to make their own. So they really took good care of them. And um, one brush was capable of doing lots of different techniques. So you can uh, probably paint this entire picture with just a medium to small size round brush especially since we're using this size canvas. Okay, so our little manor house back here, now that we've got this brown on our um, palette, we're going to mix it with some white, okay? And the white and brown are gonna make this um, really soft, pretty color. And that, well, let's see, it's like a almond color. And our manor house, it's very far away. Let's see if I can get this on the... Is that in focus? See it back there? It's like an almond color. And the roof is like a warm brown. Maybe like a reddish brown. And then there's all those tiny, tiny windows. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do this really easy. You don't need to make this perfect. Remember, this is impressionism. Even if you study this painting, those windows are not perfect. If I go in there with this loose kind of impressionistic style and I paint these little tiny perfect square windows it's gonna just throw off this picture because what's gonna happen is when the viewer looks at the picture the first thing I'm they're gonna notice are these shapes these um, really quickly identifiable shapes we do not want that in our painting so um, really quickly all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and base the edge or the corners of my little manor house do 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 and it is truly that fast and that simple. Do not baby this part, okay? Uh, and then let's see. I'm gonna put some red on my palette now, just a tiny bit. I'm gonna come back for more when we start to do the poppies. But I'm going to just get a little bit of this red and mix it with some of that umber. Can you see that? Okay, right here, I'm mixing it with some of the darker umber to make the roof color. Okay, and the roof is just, I'm pressing my brush and I'm pulling it across. Okay, the sides of the roof I can't really see. Maybe this corner I can see in my reference, but the rest of the roof 
is hidden behind these trees. Okay, there you go. There's your roof. All right, so let's do our windows. I'm gonna wash out my brush and I'm gonna um, make sure that my brush is nice and pointed like this. My bristles are all going in the same direction and I'm gonna pick up this umber and I'm just going to use the umber. No other color. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twirl my brush in a circle like this in the paint to create kind of a crisp point, you know, as best as I can. It's not uh, perfect. You don't need to go get a separate liner brush for this. Just very gently, and it looks like there's three that I can see here. Just very gently add in your little windows. Okay, and even that to me is too perfect. So I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and then we're going to go over that and kind of mess that up because we don't want this to be like little polka dots. Even though the windows, you know, architecturally, we want them to be the same distance apart from, you know, um, each of the other ones and we want them to be spaced correctly on the, on the little manor house. These are a little bit too perfect. So I might come in here and just kind of dab a little bit around those windows and age that a little bit. So it looks like it's so far away you can't make out those perfect details. So do you see how I'm just kind of coming in here and breaking that up so it's not such a hard um, shape? Okay, I'm just going to come in here and just kind of dab a little bit around those windows and break up that window shape so it's not so... Uh, um, what's the word? Prominent. Okay. You can also add a little bit of a shadow here underneath your manor house roof, which will give it nice dimension here. Okay. And I'm not going to worry about making a straight line and that's needs to be a darker color. I'm just going to kind of dance a, well, I'm going to twirl my brush, try to get a point. I'm just going to kind of move a little bit of a shadow color under there. Oh, we're gonna have to come back when that's a little bit dry because it doesn't wanna doesn't wanna stick right now. Okay, so we're gonna let that just dry and uh, leave it as is, and we can start working on our trees. Okay. All right. So our trees. We've got our sap green and our burnt umber here. This sap green is like, um, it's not really the kind of color that you want. Uh, just on. It's like a primary color. I mean, it's not a primary color. It's a secondary color, but it's so. Um, it's like a crayon, you know, that like typical green. So we really want to kind of work that green into some a different color and uh, give it some, um, you know, like a unique twist. So we're going to add some brown to this and kind of dirty the color, I guess, is a good way of putting it. It's not so clean and perfect like a new crayon out of the crayon box. It looks like kind of a aged green that you would see outside on a walk with an overcast day far, far away. So that's what we want to do to it. We want to kind of age it. So we're going to add some of that brown to it. And once we've got that brown in there, we've got this beautiful, rich green. So um, most of these trees here, this one here, is really quite thick or dense. So you can't see a lot of the sky through it. And some of these back here are also very dense. Now this landscape is a classic, um, you know, um, a, a classic landscape the little miniature landscapes that you find in galleries, you know, with these dotted trees in the foreground. It's really beautiful. And the technique that a lot of early painters did for them is um, a, a really quick and organic uh, way of painting. There's not a lot of detail here. So you just really have a few colors. They spent quite a lot of time in this field, but these, these trees in the back, they didn't. They would just put their brush, like squish it like that, and then let the brush do the work. So as you see, if you look at your reference photo really carefully, look at the shape of these bushes. So this one's closer, so it's larger. But up at the top here, we've kind of got a part sticking up like this. They would just use their brush to just kind of, you know, get that organic shape. They wouldn't spend a lot of their time doing the outline of this perfect you know, a uh, shrub, they really would just utilize the shape of their brush and just press their brush up and let it kind of twirl and do its magic to create this shape of a bush. See that? Okay, now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pounce a little bit. See, pouncing is where you do this. So I'm just going to do a very gentle pounce like this coming down like, like, like so. Now, do you see that my green paint is transparent here? 
Okay, so what you can do for that is just pick up a tiny bit of white, tiny, tiny bit of white, and then add some more green and some more brown. And that's um, going to help create more of an opaque color. All right, so do you see how that one's much more op opaque? And it just changed the tint of it very slightly. All right, so there's also kind of a shrub here, which um, is really effective for this because again, it makes the viewer go, oh, what's on this side? The rest of the landscape's over here off the canvas. And this is just a beautiful little clip, uh, you know, um, picture of this one portion, but I can see that the landscape and the sky and everything goes off of the picture. Okay, so we're gonna add this little tiny one here. I mean, it's about the same height as this one here. And this one is about half, less than half of um, the sky. And then we've got this large one next to it. But uh, if you look carefully, you'll see that there are some shorter bushes, one little circle one here and then one tiny one here that comes across the landscape over to this larger tree. Okay, so the larger tree has much more um, like branches, you can see the branches here and they're kind of breaking off and you can see the beautiful blue sky and the clouds through them. So when we do landscapes and we do uh, trees, one of the most common mistakes that beginning painters make is that they'll make their tree like a solid head of broccoli and you cannot see the sky through it and so it doesn't look like a real tree. Uh, real trees have so many different kinds of branches and the leaves are all kind of falling and there's so many twigs, but it's not so thick that you can't see the sky through. I mean, I'm sure there's some varieties of trees that you can't see the sky through, you know, but most trees uh, you can. So that's really important when we're painting uh, landscapes with trees in them that you make sure you take time to do your observation and study the tree that you're painting uh, and make sure that you take the time to notice where the trees and the branches kind of open up and you can see the spaces in between them to see the sky. Okay, so we're gonna start with this and on your reference you can see kind of like this trunk that kind of comes out like that. This is kind of a funny shaped tree. I wonder what it is. It looks kind of like a eucalyptus to me. I, I had a eucalyptus tree on a property. It was kind of funny looking. So it kind of looks like that to me. But anyway, okay, so the bottom part uh, is here. And then there's like another top part. It's like an ice cream cone. See that? So the bottom portion here, um, I'm going to add a little bit of white to my green and my brown because that was a little bit too transparent again. Okay. And I'm going to start to do the center portion here. And I'm doing that with a pouncing technique again. Just pounce, pounce pounce, just pressing my brush up against it. Now, if I go too far with this and I make a big circle, that's going to look like broccoli and I don't want that. So what we need to do is once we've got our general shape for the center, it's time to start working our bristle. I am being very careful not to pounce in a way that makes a big fat circle like this. See that? Just another circle. I don't want that. I just kind of want to press really gently and only let a portion of my paintbrush's bristles hit the canvas, do you see? And that way I'm creating those branches. Okay, if I press too hard and just smash my whole paintbrush up against it like this, all right, that's just gonna put all that paint on that canvas and I'm gonna have a big um, you know, sh shape there that I can't see the sky through. So we don't wanna do that. Okay, so down here I'm gonna kind of make this tree shape um, organic or misshapen. In nature, when we're doing landscapes, it's really important to remember that nothing in nature is perfect. Or when we do find something in nature that's truly perfect, uh, we stop, right? We notice it right away because it's not normal. Usually nature kind of grows this way and that way and things grow over it and under it and it's all kind of um, topsy-turvy and a little bit, you know, messy. And that's the beauty of nature, right? So we want to make sure that we capture that in our painting. So when we look at the shape of this tree, keep in mind that there's parts of this tree that kind of come out this way, a little bit farther, reaching towards the sun. Okay, I'm just going to very gently pounce some twigs there. And then on this side, there's some branches that come out. Okay. And one of them up here is a little bit taller, reaching for the sun there. The one under there is a little bit shorter. See that shape? It's starting to look a little bit more like a tree. And then up here, there's like this 
bushier part that's like rounded. See that rounded area that's coming around here? And if you can't see my reference photo very well in this video, make sure that while you watch this video, um, you've got your reference photo in your hand, okay? So that you can kind of see what I'm talking about as we go. All right, so very gently, I've got a little bit of these bristles dancing out here and making little branches, okay? And then in here, I'm gonna kind of create a little shape where this tree's gonna get ready to um, branch out into this, this like hat <laughs> or this, the top part of this tree that's kind of like a circle. Um, if you notice too in your reference photo, it's kind of a different color. It's got like a um, reddish kind of color to it. If you wanna add that, go ahead. I like that color, so I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna pick up that roof color, that red and the brown that I had earlier. I'm gonna start to add that up here, just very gently around the top of it. And it does go all the way to the top of my canvas. Okay, and I'm just gonna create a very delicate kind of circular shape here being careful that I don't make a large pouncing stroke with my brush like this and make that solid paint. I don't want that. So do you see how I'm very carefully making this reddish color around this um, sphere kind of shape? Okay, and then it kind of connects down here to the base of this tree. I need more paint, so I'm gonna pick that up, pick up a little bit more of that reddish color, okay? Keep pouncing very softly and gently so that I don't make it too thick. And then once I've got the outside kind of pounced and all those branches, I can make the inside, you know, thicker like this. So do you see that? See how I've got the shape of this tree and it, um, it, it looks a little bit, you know, um, odd. And that's what we want. We don't want it to look like a perfect little lollipop or you know ice cream cone or something really um, perfect we don't want that this tree it has been there a long time growing through many storms and we want it to look like that all right so let's get some more green mixed when you're mixing paint on your palette um, it is a good idea to mix a good amount so I'm scooping up quite a bit here and I'm gonna pull a little bit of white to make sure not to lighten it just to get rid of that transparency Okay, I still want my dark, rich green. I'm gonna add some more brown there. Uh, when we're painting, I know some of you are really careful about not mixing your colors. And I remember when I was in painting school, you know, when I went to school for painting and art, I had a teacher who just absolutely was bent on making sure that her students didn't wash out their brush too much because what happens is when we become too careful about the colors that we're mixing, we don't create these beautiful um, accidental colors, which we find in nature. There's so many different uh, colors in nature, it's almost impossible to try to mix them if we do it on purpose. But if we let our brush do it on accident by just scooping here and there and not being too careful with it, uh, especially when we're using light colors, like colors, colors that you can mix together like blue and green without changing it too much, um, then, you know, all the better. Don't uh, worry too much about it. All right, so let's finish these um, plants along the back here. So what I'm going to do is, uh, if you see in your reference photo, there's some low bushes that are either smaller or they're farther away. These ones look like they're smaller to me because they're kind of um, down here right under the, the tree. Okay. And I have I see one right next to the tree that's a really nice uh, round shape, but I need to make it a little bit taller here because I left that part blank on the sky. Now I'm not adding any color variety right now to these, to these shrubs. I'm just basing them in with this uh, greenish color, okay? So go ahead and just base them in. Get, focus on the shapes right now. You don't have to focus on the... Um, colors too much. We just want to get them based in. Okay, if you notice in your reference photo, I can see the individual shrubs. That's really important that we don't just like paint like a, you know, a hedge. A hedge is like a straight line of the shrubs. I see one that comes up and down and look at the sky in between. See that? See the sky that goes in between? That's really important. Now I've got another one over here. Okay, this one's kind of close to the house, and I can see the sky in between again. And then the one next to the house here goes in front of the house. 
See that? It's in front of the house. So whoever lives in this beautiful country house. Okay, my phone died on me, so I had to stop the video. Okay, what I was saying was whoever lives in this uh, beautiful country house is nestled among the trees. So that's really important that we um, create some of these trees here kind of coming in front of the house. Now we don't want it so that the trees are really covering the house in a way that it's not attractive or it's not pretty. We just want it to, um, obviously this painter positioned himself or herself in a way in which the entire uh, scene was very beautiful. And so you can see that they have a really good uh, image of the house here. So in front of the house, you can see there is another little plant or, you know, actually it's probably quite large. These country houses are very tall that goes right in front. Don't be afraid to do that. And then there's another one next to it here that is quite tall, uh, taller than the actual house. So that's going to come up to the side and I'm just being very gentle with my brush here and just doing little pouncing techniques like this. Okay, to create that general shape, and then I'm going to bring it all the way down to the ground here. Okay, oops, I don't want that line, so I'm going to pounce that. All right, and we're going to move on. So then next to that one, we've got another quite large tree. And I am I can press harder now and use the shape of my round brush to get that shape. Okay, now we've got this section here. There's actually a little bit more of a space here in the reference photo, but I left this part white so I need to paint that in. Alright and then we've kind of got a few more that kind of go this way and they go off the canvas. So you see a portion of the tree or the bush and it goes off the canvas. That's really important. So it's creating that um, uh, feeling that the rest of this picture is going off the canvas. Okay. Alright so now what I'm going to do is we want to add a little bit of um, uh, colors, uh, diversity of colors into these um, bushes back here. And in your reference photo, you'll notice that there is a really dark color on these. It's almost, it's almost like black, but um, not quite like a really, really, really dark brown. So we can pick up more brown, more brown than green, and mix a really dark color here. Okay, and I really like to play around with my shadows. Don't be afraid to pick up some blue and put that in the corner and say, hmm, I wonder what it would look like if I added some blue to this. Okay, and what we can do is come in here with that darkish greenish brown blue and add some of that into here. All right, now um, these are still quite wet, so I think I'm going to let them dry. I'm going to add some of that darker color along the bottom here. You can see that there's like this strip of green kind of down here, down low. So I want to add some of this darker shadowy um, color to the bottom there, maybe over here also. Okay, and also I do see that really dark color in the center of this tall tree. So I want to add some of that. Okay, it adds a really nice depth to our foliage. Okay, so this is still a little bit wet. That's all right. I'm just kind of twirling my brush to get that paint on there. All right, and we can come back when that's a little bit more dry. So I don't have to fuss about that right now. Okay, so let's let these dry a bit. And let's talk about um, the meadow. The meadow here is going to be such a fun thing to paint because uh, there is so much color and so much texture and this is exactly the kind of thing that I personally love to paint because there's not a lot of rules here. I don't have to worry about a lot of contour shapes or anything and um, I like the irregular patterns of all of these poppies kind of sprinkled throughout this meadow. It's just beautiful. Uh, I also personally like paintings that I can do uh, quickly without too much fussing. Um, I was a portrait artist for a long time, and so when you do portraits, you have to really fuss and make sure every single thing's perfect. So I love these um, painting studies that are just really loose and fast. It's just really um, kind of therapeutic to paint. 
So let's talk about the colors that we see here. <clears throat> uh, the colors in the meadow are uh, a warmer green. So they're, it's much lighter than the greens back here. And there's some yellows in here. There's some lime greens. I do see lavenders and I see blue over on the right side. Okay, and um, all of that color diversity, you, would, you wouldn't really think about having blue and lavender in a field, but from a distance, remember this painting is gonna look so different up close while you're painting it compared to when you walk in the room and it's on the wall. So um, this impressionistic technique feels a little bit messy up close, but when it's far away from you, all the light and shadow uh, looks so real from far away. So when you walk into a room and it's on the wall 10 feet away, it's going to look like, uh, you know, very realistic, but just up close, it looks a little bit uh, dabbly and dotty and a little messy, maybe if you're a perfectionist painter. I know some of you are, um, but don't worry. Just trust the process and trust the um, style. This is impressionism. So keep repeating that to yourself. I'm not worried about making my poppies perfect shaped poppies because that would not match this painting. What I want to create is the light and shadow. So let's do a 60 second observation of our uh, painting reference again and get to know this field. Um, if you can, try to remove the, the flowers. So try to remove the poppies, remove the lavender and the blue in that yellow. Try to take that off and look at the greens underneath it. So all of these flowers have stems and leaves and they're going to create a light and shadow that's underneath the flowers. If we just painted our, our meadow one color green and then did poppies on top, poppy, poppy, poppies, and then little dandelions and all these different flowers, it would look flat. There would be no depth to our picture. So it's really important that we create depth, okay? And um, there's lots of different ways to do that in our landscape. One of the first ways is um, to make sure that our proportions are correct. So our vanishing line on the horizon here, this house is quite far. And when we get to painting the person, the person's actually, you know, this big. So twice the size of the house. So that alone is gonna give this picture depth, okay? But we also wanna create depth with the light and shadow. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So we're gonna grab our brush again. Let me make sure I've got all my colors laid out first. Uh, I want sap green. I'm gonna put some more on my palette here because I'm gonna be using a lot of it. I'm gonna go ahead and get some yellow on my palette as well. And um, I really love to use ochre. This is ochre, yellow ochre. This is like one of my favorite base colors when I'm doing landscapes because it just brings a really nice warmth to the picture. And let's see, I also would like, I have my blues. Um, I've got my red here that I can play around with my blue to create that lavender color. I think I just need some more brown. And my brown is going to help me create all those darker, richer greens in here. Okay, so if you do not have this lime green, this is not a necessary purchase at all. Uh, you can mix this color with your sap green and a uh, really nice yellow, a really vivid yellow color. Okay. So uh, you don't have to use this. So I'll show you how to just mix it. Okay. Let me clean this palette up. All right, we are ready. So we're going to start by base coating in uh, the field. And I'm going to do it in two sections because if you notice in your reference photo, the field here slopes down, kind of slopes and then comes kind of up a little bit over there. It's so pretty. Um, so I want to make sure that we get that in. So let's start with this ridge. And on your reference, you've got this line here, and that's really the slope, okay? So let's start back here. And don't mind this little tear. I'm just going to paint right over it. Um, so uh, let's pick up some of our green. And this green, again, is like that crayon color from the box. We want to change that a little bit so that it looks a little bit more um, uh, refined, <laughs> I guess, in lack of a better word. You know, you just want to make it look like you really put your, your touch on it. So... I'm gonna um, put a little bit of yellow in there because this is actually pretty dark. So I'm gonna pick up some of my yellow. Actually, I'm gonna pick up a lot of that yellow. And I'm not worried about the color green on that yellow. It's totally fine because I'm gonna be mixing a lot of these colors anyway. And I can see that this yellow and green is a little transparent. 
<clears throat> transparent is like, you know, you can see through it. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of this white just to make this color a little bit more opaque. Okay, I don't want to lighten the color. I just need to get rid of that transparency. Um, and if you've been in my painting classes before, then you would have heard me talk about base coating in your canvas. Um, sometimes I paint my whole canvas yellow or like ochre. I love ochre as my base color. And then I'll do my sketch and then I'll paint on top of that color because that warmth underneath is going to come through. And a lot of, you know, when you paint, you really do work in layers. So the base color really, uh, it, it matters. All right, but uh, today we're just going to do lots of layers and we'll cover up that white. So um, we've got our lime kind of color here. And I'm going to be working over in this section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just put little um, sections of green, kind of like a lawn, back over there. It's going to come this way. Um, it's going to come up to the plants over there. Like maybe this is the lawn that's kind of reaching up towards this manor house. Okay. Now this is the fun part. So I've got some green in there. Now I get to add some other colors. So I'm going to pick up some of my ochre. And I'm going to mix it over here. It's right next to my blue. It's totally okay if it mixes a little bit. No problem at all. I'm going to come in here and add some of that green. It almost looks exactly the same. I actually like that blue though. I'm going to pick up some more of that blue here. And I'm going to start to bring some of that kind of green over here next to it. Okay, maybe put some on top there. Kind of break that up a little bit. I'm just doing my little dabbing strokes here right up next to my my shrubs, but not painting on top of them, right? You want to make sure that, um, look carefully at your canvas and make sure there's no white showing when you apply your paint, okay? Um, make sure you've got enough paint on your brush. Now, if your paint is a little transparent, you may need to do a second coat, and that's totally fine. Um, you'll probably have to do lots of coats, at least two, with some colors, um, because they are awfully transparent, so don't worry about that. Okay, so I'm gonna add some more of this uh, greenish color up here to this um, line of the bottom of the trees here. And I'm actually just gonna bring it all the way over so that it looks like, okay, this lawn goes all the way up there. Now what I need to do is I need to get some white here and create a really light green. And I'm gonna grab some yellow. And if you notice, there's like this yellowish kind of patch over here. I want to put that in and I'm dabbing. This is a wet on wet technique. I'm dabbing and kind of rolling my brush to get that white off my brush. So do you see how that looks? Now, am I making this perfect and smooth and like side strokes and being really careful? Not at all. I don't want to do that with this painting. This painting is an impressionistic study. Okay. So always remind yourself of that. If you're painting, you're like, oh, that doesn't look good. It may not look exactly like mine and it may not match the reference photo, but these are both just references for you. So a reference is just kind of a help. It's just kind of a general idea. And, you know, you don't have to make it exactly the same. So, um, you know, this isn't a drawing class. Remember that this is a painting class. And so you're focusing on how to hold your brush, how to create the, um, the depth of color. Those are all painting techniques. Drawing techniques um, have to do with like, you know, perfect mathematics. And so don't fuss over that for this painting. We're not working with perfect mathematics here. We just want to get these colors onto this canvas. Okay. So I, um, I see a little bit of a yellowish part in the field over here. I'm going to add a little strip of that because I really like that up here, like lights coming down the field, but just a little bit. And I'm going to do a little bit over here also. All right. Now I see like this lavenderish tan color. So I'm going to wash out my brush a little bit, just a little bit. It doesn't have to be totally clean because I'm going to work on top of the other colors. I'm going to pick up some white and I'm going to go ahead and just mix it right here. Pick up a little bit of that red, pick up some ochre and some yellow. Look at that color. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay. So that's really nice. It's just too um, vivid. So <clears throat> I'm going to mix it with some white to tone it down a bit. Okay. And I'm going to come in here and I, I, it's okay if it's a little bright because it's going to mix with my green a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to come in here like this and add some of this color in here. And I want it to kind of, it's fine if it mixes with my green because that's exactly what I want. See, I'm just kind of dancing the two colors around. Now, if I do this 10 times, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If I do this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, what's going to happen to my paint? It's going to blend together. And I'm not going to have all those different little colors in there. I'm just going to have this new color. Okay? Now, we don't want that. We want to make sure that when we put color, new paint color, onto our um, grass here, that we're just dabbing kind of on top of it. Okay? And I kind of want it to mix slightly, but I don't want to lose either color. I want to still keep that um, warm peachy color and I still want to keep the green. That's really important. Okay. All right. So now I've got some purple in here and some blue. So uh, let's see, let's get some of this red and bring it over here with this blue. And this is a really um, bright red. So let's see what kind of purple we can get. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So I'm going to mix some white with this purple to get a lavender. Okay, can you see that? Let me move this a little bit so you can see. All right, so um, I'm going to add some more white. Now, my white's starting to get dirty, and that's okay. I, I'm not concerned about that at all. That's perfectly okay. Okay, so we've got this, like, muddy lavender color. That's what we want. If we make all of the colors in this landscape totally vivid, then it's going to be overpowering. It's not going to look like a, a scene from nature because nature even if you have this beautiful lavender plants with vivid purple when they're a mile away you can still kind of see the purple but they're dirty there there's atmosphere between you and the lavender you know so it's it's a little bit muted so that's really important okay so i'm going to come in here with this kind of dirty lavender color and i'm just going to imagine all of the beautiful lavender cover my little tear there in my canvas that's growing all along the fields back here I'm going to add some lavender over here, little patches this way. And my strokes need to kind of go in this direction. If I paint my strokes in this direction, it's going to make my land look flat. But remember, we want it to come down and then back up. So your strokes need to go in the direction that you want your land to go. So I'm kind of going this direction, okay? So let's get the lavender, more, uh, quite a bit of lavender in this area. I see lots of lavender in this section here. I'm going to bring that all the way down actually to this line that I had. Like this. My little tear. Uh, I will explain at the end of the class how to fix that. <laughs> um, in case it ever happens to your pictures, don't uh, worry. There's a way to fix it. Okay, or patch it, I should say, from, from, uh, from the back so that it's not so obvious. All right, so now I've got this lavender that I'm bringing over to this edge of the, the field. I want the lavender to kind of come off the edge of the canvas so that you think, oh, it's going off that way. And then I see this really beautiful blue. So I'm going to just take a little bit of that purple out of my brush, pick up some blue, mix it right next to my lavender. Because I want my blue to be a little bit muddied also. I don't want it to be sky blue because it's not. It's mixed in with all of this grass. And I'm going to start to add some of this blue in here. Like there are, you know, little bluebells growing in this beautiful field. And there's quite a bit of that on our, my reference. So I'm going to add quite a bit. Oh, that is so pretty. Okay, so do you see how we're starting to get this kind of shape Take off. I'm going to add some over here and really make sure that my um, brush strokes are creating this flow of downhill. So up here is the ridge and I want it to kind of come down. Okay, I'm going to bring some, I can even get some green and put some green in here to make it look like, okay, well we've got some leaves in here and some grass. So we've got to add some green in here. It can't just be purple and blue. All right, so do you see that? Now I'm going to add some green in here. All right, same little um, dabbing strokes with my um, round brush, okay? I'm going to pick up a little bit more blue and bring the blue off the edge of the canvas. That's really important. I want it to look like these flowers are not just clustered in the center of the canvas. I want it to look like they go off the edge of the canvas. So I've got this little uh, bit of darker blue here. Okay, and I'm just gently kind of pouncing on like that. All right, you're able to see that? Okay, good. Okay, so now we've got this field 
that is starting to level out. So we've kind of got this far away slope and then it's coming up over here. And then as it reaches the front of the picture, the bottom of the canvas starts to kind of level out. So let's start working on this slope and then we'll have it meet down here, and kind of level this way, okay? All right, so the slope going uh, this way has a lot of yellow. And I love it, it's so pretty. I love this um, lime green yellow color. So we're gonna mix that yellow with some green um, for a good base. You can come back and um, add brighter yellow to that if you want in a minute. Um, but let's just start with this color. Oh, that's really transparent. I need to get some white. That yellow that I've got is super transparent um, because I didn't base coat my canvas for this, I need to make sure that I've got a nice um, opaque color. Okay, so this is like a really soft, kind of like chartreuse, really pretty. And I'm just gonna kind of dance that right here. If you look at your reference photo, it looks like these weeds or wildflowers have grown up pretty tall here. And it's kind of blocking some of this uh, these big huge bushes back here and that's really important that we make sure that these come up just a little bit because this is the top of the hill and these flowers are closer to us so that's what's going to help us create depth in this picture okay so don't be afraid to you know whatever's closer to you is going to be um you know taller or going to be in front of what you've already painted so never be afraid to add those details uh as you paint in front of what you've already painted. Sometimes it's hard to paint in front of what you've already painted because you think, oh my gosh, I worked so hard on it, I don't want to cover it. But if you don't cover it just a little bit, then it's going to look like this thing in front is not actually in front. Okay, so make sure that you come up just a little bit on top of this green part here so that it looks like, oh yeah, these flowers are growing closer to us. Okay, so let's add some more of this yellow. And if you notice in the reference, it just comes down, uh, let's see, is that in focus? It just comes down a tiny bit here, okay? But it's kind of that ridge there. It's really important that we get that yellow in that ridge part, okay? So let's add some more. I'm going to add a nice big section here. I don't want to cover that lavender-y shadow that we've got there because that creates a nice... Uh, uh, look that it you know th that dips down and that there's some a different flower growing behind it because it's actually quite far away um there's also some yellow over here that i see and uh, i'm gonna let this kind of come in a little bit more all right now that we've got that on there we can start adding in our greens and any other colors that we see just how we did the blues and the purples over here the same over this way so i'm gonna pick up some of my greens here um, I didn't dry my brush just now, but I should have. So if you notice, guys, I'm not mixing water with my paints, okay? Uh, this paint does not want to be mixed with water. If you're doing detail work in which you need the paint to glide off your brush very carefully, then you can mix water with it. But other than that, you want to use it pretty, you know, you want to use it straight from the bottle so that it can cover your canvas. See, you know, this is canvas grade paint. Um, if you're using, uh, you know, whatever paint you're using at home, I can guarantee it, it doesn't need to be watered down unless, of course, you're using watercolor. But um, these techniques will not really, they, they won't convert to watercolor. These are not watercolor techniques. So you're going to want to use an acrylic or an oil. You could definitely use an oil for this, uh, these techniques also. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit of a darker green here. Um, and I'm going to add start to add some of these darker greens that kind of come down in here. And really what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm just going to start to create these sections of darker green that kind of comes through this field. Okay? I'm not going to be super careful and baby my picture, right? Because we're not doing that. But do you see uh, how transparent my paint is? It's because I, I accidentally added too much water there because I washed my brush out and I didn't dab it. Okay, so I, it looks like I need some more green mix. So I'm going to pick up some more of my sap green and bring it over here. And uh, I'm going to mix a little bit with the brown, just a tad. And I'm going to start to bring some of this over here. And I'm going to give myself some sections of this green. Okay. 
over here. Now I know that I'm going to be doing lots and lots of different colors on top of this and in between. So I'm not being too picky about where it goes. I just need to make sure that I've got green um, evenly dispersed throughout this fill. Okay. And I've got about 10 minutes of work time before this paint, you know, dries. So I, I know I've got plenty of time. I'm just going to come in here and you know, kind of add sections of green like this without worrying too much about, you know, being perfect, just dabbing with my round brush and getting these colors on. And I can see that I'm going to need to come back and add some more layers of paint. Uh, first of all, because if you notice, you can see the bristles here. See all those, my bristle strokes? I don't want to see those bristle strokes. When I look at this picture, I just want to see thick paint. Uh, that's another telltale sign of a new painter when you can see thin paint and they're not confident yet with their paint, uh, putting the paint on the canvas. If you go to a gallery and you see paintings, those paintings um, are going to lean more on the side of like impasto, which is where you've got super thick paint because um, that's that's just the sign of just a quality, confident painter that's just, you know, willing to put the paint on where they mean it. So if you look here with these spots that don't have a lot of paint on there, um, you know that we've got to go back and we've got to add more paint there. Okay. So uh, the thing about painting is, is that, it, you know, it takes layers. And since I'm not outside in the sunlight, this is taking, you know, about 10 minutes or so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually not just work in this section, I'm actually going to come all the way down. And if you see in our reference photo, there's a lot of green up, up front here. Okay. So I know that I'm going to need a lot of that green. So I'm going to just get busy painting that in. And actually at front here is really quite dark. So I'm just going to start basing this in here. I'm going to get some more of my brown and I can mix that right on my canvas. Now, do you see how transparent that is? You see how you can see my white canvas through my brush strokes? I got to take care of that right now because that drives me crazy because I really want to get good coverage. So I'm going to get some white, mix it with my brown and my green. Let me scoot this over so you can uh, see that. And that already, see the difference? Just by adding white, it does change the um, tint of it, but it really doesn't change the value. It doesn't make it lighter uh, very much, just, just ever so slightly. Okay, but it does help with the um, transparency. Okay, so I'm just going to start getting this all based in here. Really nice, even coverage so that when I go back, and I'm mixing a lot because I'm going to need a lot of this. When I go back to do my second and third coat with all my flowers, uh, I'm not going to be worried about seeing my canvas. Okay, because that's a lot to worry about. I'm trying to, you know, get enough paint on there. and you know, I can't worry about that right now. I just got to get these colors on here. So I'm just doing larger strokes here. Just covering my canvas. Okay. And the sections that are white, I'll show you what I'm going to do there. Those are going to be green too, but they're just going to be a different color green. So I'm, you know, just kind of making a map um, of where I want my different greens to go. Okay. All right. I'm going to add some uh, greens back here. Just some behind the um, figure who's walking with the umbrella. And that's going to be sketched on your canvas. So you kind of want to work around that. Uh, unless you're confident that you can resketch it. Okay, so this green is a little bit dark. I can see that. So I'm just going to add a little bit more here behind the umbrella. Technically, guys, when you are painting at home, um, you're it's uh, easier to just paint this in and then sketch the figure on top of the green field. But, you know, because I wanted to get that sketched on for you, you are going to have to take that extra step and paint around her. Which, um, you know, I guess it's good practice to go around the details uh, with your brush. It's good, it's good practice um, for, your, for your brush. But, you know, if you are a confident drawler, you are so welcome to paint there and then go back and try to sketch. Okay, so I've got this um, worked out. And you can see that there's like a lot of texture here. Now, this texture is competing with the texture in my clouds because it's almost the same texture. This like fluffy cloud thing. These look like fluffy green clouds. We don't want that. This is just the base. 
okay? So this is actually a really soft kind of texture that is in this field, and that's what we're eventually gonna get to. So um, I'm gonna pick up some of this lighter green now, and I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna start to work in that lighter green in between these sections of darker green. See that? And as I paint, guys, I'm gonna kinda move my brush in different directions. My strokes are no longer these little tiny taps and dabs. They're kind of going this way and then this way, okay? And I want my brush strokes to um, break up this texture. But I can't do that until I have lots of paint. Because as long as I can see my brush strokes and the white canvas behind it, I'm going to have that funny texture there. So really, we've just got to get the paint on there. And don't be afraid to walk away from your picture for 10 minutes and come back. I know that our two and a half hour painting class at the park is a long time um, if you're not used to painting that long, you know, um, but you know, some of you could paint for hours and the time seems to stop when you paint. I'm like that. I could paint all day and forget to eat, <laughs> but um, sometimes I just need to take a break and then come back after things have dried a little bit and I can start to, you know, kind of rework, rework the areas. So I'm going to come in here while this uh, dark green is still wet and just kind of dance in these lighter green areas where the white is. This is a really opaque green. So do you see this strip that's happening here? Like little green caterpillars on my picture? I don't want that. I need to make sure that I come in here and break all of that up. I'm not painting over it. I know it looks like that because I'm painting fast, but look, I'm just coming next to it and in between it, and I'm kind of just dragging very gently up and down around it. You can still see that green section. See that? I don't want this field to be all the same color green. That is so important. If it is all the same color green, it won't have the depth that I need it to have. Okay? And when we're doing uh, landscapes, depth is uh, the ticket to making it a very beautiful and effective image. All right, so I'm going to keep coming with this opaque green here and just dance it in between all of these darker greens and um, create this rolling effect of many different plants growing um, throughout this meadow. Okay, and I'm actually um, going... Uh, um, up and down with my brush, these vertical strokes are really um, actually creating a nice look for the um, grasses that are growing up here. So that's uh, that's a nice way to do it. Also, I had some fun ones down here, but you know I kind of like this um, elongated stroke. So let's try doing that some more up and down, some vertical strokes, which will give it the appearance of uh, grasses. I like that. Okay, let's pick up some more. Make sure you've got lots of paint in your brush. It takes twice as long to paint if you're struggling to keep paint in your brush. So if I come over, if I'm run out of paint and I keep trying to paint, I'm not going to cover my canvas and I'm going to have all these little white dots of exposed canvas. And that is um, so frustrating because you have to go back and remix your colors to fill in those spaces and it's really hard to same so then you end up having to like repaint those sections and it's just totally better to keep lots of paint in your brush at all times as soon as you need more paint go and get it okay so i'm going to start to bring this up in here and i see these dark sections in here i'm leaving them because it looks like you know those are pockets of like um the field where there's not a whole lot of grass growing and maybe you can see shadows down to the soil, especially as it gets closer to the viewer. Okay, so remember, you want this to have this uh, effect of mini layers. Okay, so if you do it with the technique I showed you, you're going to create that. So then come, come in here with this lighter green again and just kind of dance these vertical little strokes up and down. Just so slightly. I don't want to do it too much, right, or I'll lose all my color. So here we go in, in between this area, just up and down, really soft. I'm kind of dancing it between the dark and the light. And where my light green touches the dark green, I want to just gently dance the two colors together. Even if the dark green has dried a little bit, that's all right. I can just dance a little bit of that light green right on top, just like that. 
ideally though if it's still if it's still wet then that's just great because it um, makes it really easy to blend but don't worry if you've got to take a break and come back to this painting and things have dried that's totally okay one of the reasons why I really like uh, acrylic is because um, let's see, yeah I'm still recording okay is because um, it's so um, versatile and technique but also just easy to work with oil um not quite so easy but still fantastic if you um, enjoy painting with oil I grew up learning how to paint on with oil and so um um I I, I like it a lot I just I'm not very patient <laughs> and oil takes you know like three days to dry so um, now they've got all these fun mediums for acrylic where I can uh, add paint extender to my paint, my acrylic paint, and it will make it so that it takes longer to dry. Um, there's so many fun mediums that you can add to acrylic paint now that it just makes it so uh, easy to use. That if you wanted to do oil paint techniques with acrylic, you could. And the fact that it's water soluble makes them really nice because you can just wash them out in the sink instead of using turpenoid and turpentine and all those things. Okay, so um, I'm going to just keep filling in these sections here. And I can leave some of these areas uh, white if I wanted to, because I can go in with those other colors. I think I'm going to come over here, though, with this green. I see this lighter green kind of up this way. So I kind of want to come up here and add this lighter green. Now, it's not so... Um, there's not so much texture up there, but there's definitely this loose kind of almost like fog or something back there. Really loose color. So I want to make sure that my hill is not straight across, guys. When you're painting this, don't make a line like whoop, like a clean line because that um, doesn't look like a flowery meadow. It looks like, you know, like someone just went over there with a lawnmower and cut all the grass. But this is... This is not that way. This is a wildflower field, and this just all grown amok in some areas, and these flowers have taken over. So we want to make sure that we leave a lot of that texture along the top ridge here. Okay. All right, so here I am dancing in a little bit of this green in here. Okay, so let's pause and look at all of this color. Look at that texture and that color. It's so, so pretty. I love it. Um, and it's exactly what we want for this stage of our painting, okay? This is just one of the base layers we're going to add to this, uh, but we want it to have this soft texture first, okay? So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to kind of finish mapping this out. Over here, uh, this is where the hill starts to kind of level out with this hill. So I can start to bring a green from this side and kind of dance it over like that. See that? So it starts to, oh, okay, so this hill starts to run down here into this one. That makes sense. Okay, kind of bring the two together. And then I also, just um, to keep my head straight, I want to make sure I finish painting in around this little figure with her umbrella so that I can see exactly where she's going to be. I'm going to paint a little green in front of her. There's her little hat and her umbrella there. Okay, and I'm going to just finish dancing in. There's There are two figures. It looks like a mother and a child. Um, so we may paint the child and we'll see how long this video is. Okay, so let's get the corner done. And uh, don't worry about making this perfect. This is just your base coat, you know. And if you love it, you could leave it for sure. But really, don't uh, don't be a perfectionist with this. I know I say that a lot, but really, I mean it. Uh, kind of let your brush do a lot of the work for you. Okay, so I think this is a good spot for me to start adding in um, some of the other colors. I'm not going to do my poppies yet, even though that's like so exciting and I want to do that. i got to wait. I've got to get my base layers done first. Okay, so I'm going to wash my brush out a little bit. Not It doesn't have to be perfect uh, because these colors are going to kind of mix. And I'm going to go for this lavender because there's a lot of lavender um, on this side too. So I'm going to get my blue and my red. Looks like I need some more red here. That makes such a beautiful purple. Uh, wow, that's pretty. Okay, but I need to add some white to that because I need lavender. And if your lavender is a little too gray, then add some more red. OK, 
Okay, this lavender in this picture is really red. So I want to make, well, I mean, kind of, this blue is almost like a bluish lavender, but the lavender that I'm looking at over here is this really nicer red, and it does kind of tie in this dramatic red from the poppies um, through the color wheel down into this blue by having this purple in between the two colors, the blue and the red and the purple in between. So I want to make sure this is kind of a warm tone of purple, which means it will have more of a uh, red in it because red is warm. Okay. And as you can see on my palette here, I am just mixing colors uh, where they fit. <laughs> okay, so when we have a painting like this that does utilize a lot of different colors, it's okay to get creative with your palette. All right, so I've got my lavender mixed. It's a little dark. Oh, well, actually, it's pretty good. I, I, I'm going to make a little bit lighter, though. Um, and actually, I do want some more red in there. So, sorry, I'm taking my time here getting this color just right. Okay, that's better. All right, so I see a lot of this lavender in here. So I'm gonna come in here and add some of that. Now, your paint is going to dry a little bit darker than it is, so do you see how dark this is? I don't know, I think that's too dark. I don't like that. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna twirl my brush and get some of that paint out and I'm gonna add more red because I want this warmer and more white because I want this painting really soft. Okay, that looks better to me now. That is better. And even though, you know, the reference photo may be a certain kind of color, I'm kind of looking at the general thing I've got going here. I mean, it is pretty darn similar, but um, I, I just really want this to be lighter. So this is uh, better to me. Slightly lighter. A little bit more white here. Okay, guys, <laughs> I really want this color to be just right because I love it in the, in the picture. All right, so I've got my lavender here and I'm gonna start to add it and it's gonna kind of come down this part of the hill. So all these sections here that are white, that is kind of my framework for where I wanna add in my lavender color. And when I add this, I wanna make sure that my paintbrush or that the design that I'm doing has this sloping effect because that's what's gonna make my hill look like it's doing this, okay? So I'm, I want it to kind of come down at an angle. Just where my white is, that's what I want. So I'm going to kind of add some of these little um, purple areas. And I'm doing that by just kind of tapping my, my round brush very gently into those areas like this. Okay? Just tapping them in there very gently. And um, this looks like it's a larger section of purple. So I'm going to make this kind of vivid purple and have it come down like that. All right, and then over here, I would like to add some more purple. Kind of dance it up here into this lighter green um, because, you know, these are wildflowers. The, the, the wind blows the seeds everywhere. So they're not like little sections where it's just, oh, I've got some blue in my brush, so I want to make sure I mix that out. Um, there's not, you know, sections that are like a square of wildflowers. and You know, they're all kind of broken apart into this field here. So... I'm gonna fill in this white, uh, but as I do it, I'm gonna kind of dance a little bit out. My tap my brush, just like I kind of did this with the trees. I kind of want to do that with these purple flowers. Um, and then as we come down here, I I, I do want to kind of work them into the green. So if that green's still wet, I'm gonna just kind of dance my purple down into there. Now, if your green's not wet, look, all you need to do is pick up some green and just bring the green to the purple. Just bring the green to the purple and kind of mix those colors a little bit as you pounce and dance on your canvas, okay? So do you see this like sloping effect oh, that we've got here? All right, I'm gonna um, add some more down in here because like I said, this purple lavender really does do a nice tie-in with, with the blues and the red poppies that we're gonna add in just a minute. So I really like that color, okay? And I can come in here with the green and just break all of this up with this purple, okay? I'm not too worried about it being perfect because these are wildflowers, they're broken up. Now, I can mess this up by making a circle patch, like a circular patch um, of wildflowers or doing big daubs like, um, on my here, look right here on my napkin if I just went like really, you know, like a big, 
dab of purple, then it would be um, too noticeable. You know, these big globs of paint. We don't want that. So you're going to want to use really delicate little strokes here. And I'm just using kind of the tip of my brush. And I'm just kind of dancing those colors in. I'm going to add some of the lavender down here. And as I add it, I'm going to kind of swoop it up to make it look like the hill is um, swooping like that. Really pretty. I mean, these these hills would be so much fun to play in. <laughs> Running down this grassy, flowery hill. Okay, so um, once I've got this white cover, that's really important. I do not want white spots on my picture. Uh, so I've got some here that I need to get covered. And I'm going to add a little bit of blue to my lavender just to give it a little bit of, um, a, oh, that's a little too blue. So I'm going to mix a little bit, mix it a little bit better in my brush to um, make it look like that's on the other side of the hill. So I'm just going to kind of add some of that blue down there. See that? So it looks like shadow or something. And that's down on that side of the hill. So I kind of want that to have that shadowy element over there. All right, so I do want to bring some blue on this side. Um, the blue on our reference is very pale. It's a very light blue. So make sure that you've got a light blue, okay? Very light. I'm going to wash my brush out for this because I've got um, this grayish purple, and I do want it to look like a light baby blue. So I'm going to pick up my white and mix a little spot right here. Um, oh, I used my turquoise blue. That's okay. I'm going to just mix a little bit of this other blue in with it to get this light blue color. And um, when we add the blue, I need to make sure, and I did put my blue there to get some of the blue off of my paintbrush, because when I add it, I don't want to have um, globs of blue. I, I want it to work in with this purple. So I'm just very gently going to come around here with this purple and um, around the green and add in these little sections of blue. Now do you see how I'm putting a little bit here and then I'm coming over here and putting a little bit here. Okay, I'm, I'm breaking them up. That's really important. If your painting is starting to look like all these different caterpillars kind of crawling around on top of the green, what we need to do is we're going to need to start to work in some green, okay? I'll show you that in a minute. So let's get some of this blue on here. So I'm going to add some larger sections of blue right here. And I think I want to add some blue on this white area. Dance it on top of that purple here. Kind of lighten this up. I like the look of the blue look. Maybe like all of the pretty blue flowers are kind of growing over on this side of the field. And oh, don't you wish you could see it growing all over here. Really makes the viewer think, oh, wow, what a beautiful landscape. I wonder what's happening on the other side. That's very good. We want the viewer to do that. Um, to think about, you know, if I could step into this painting, what else would I be able to see? Okay, so I'm going to come in here with this blue over here and just kind of make this like, almost like a foggy kind of a green. Just kind of rub my brush. There's not a whole lot of paint on my brush right now. It's almost like a, a dry brush is what, what it's called. There is a little bit of paint and it's kind of mixing with the green that's in here just a little bit. And it's kind of um, incorporating the two colors and I kind of like that look. So I haven't gotten any new paint yet. I'm just kind of working the two greens and blues in here and kind of mixing them and it's kind of a little sticky. Okay. All right. So that looks pretty good. I want to make sure that this purple looks like it's really growing in the field and then it's not just like sitting on top. So what I want to do is um, I'm going to bring some of this yellow and incorporate that down into here. So I've got my yellow and I need to mix it. Uh, right in here a little bit and already it starts to bring the hill towards you it's like all right there's not just like a line there it's actually like oh right those those plants are growing over this way okay so I'm gonna have just a few in here like this and uh, there we go all right so let's start with, um, let's go over this real fast and make sure that all of our blues and purples are kind of worked into this field a little bit. I'm going to add just a little touch of yellow here and there and make sure that my greens are um, <clears throat> next to my purples here and really incorporate well. 
Okay. I think this looks good. I don't want to overwork it. When I start to, when we start to overwork our picture, then it starts to get a little stiff and I don't really want that. So let's go ahead and start with our um, poppies. <clears throat> so um, this video is getting kind of long, so I want to make sure that we, you know, <laughs> I, I want to speed it up a little bit. Okay. Um, so we've got some yellow sections over here of these yellow flowers that are down here. This is a good practice for you before you start your poppies. Mix a little bit of white with your yellow so that it's not so transparent. <clears throat> and you're going to just kind of dance these little yellow flowers into your field. And you need to be very careful to make this very organic, which means if I do like a pattern like one, two, three, and then one, two, three, one, two, three, I'm going to um, make my picture look like these aren't wildflowers that have been sprinkled all over the the field so I need to put like clusters of like maybe one two and three four here and then move my brush over here it has to look like it was all on accident do you see how irregular this looks you know it doesn't look like I planned this out it looks like I just you know like scattered seeds all over the ground so that's what we want so what I'm kind of kind of gonna do is come in here with this brush and kind of just like bounce my brush around and kind of let it fall where it wants to okay Maybe a cluster here, and then I want to have some flowers kind of growing over this way. Maybe like three there, and then, you know, four over here, and let my brush kind of bounce and do the work for me. But there are these flowers that are growing the top. Can you see that? Okay, and having those bright flowers on top of this dark green really helps it look like the flowers are reaching up towards this, you know, the sunlight, and those greens are shadows below. All right, so we've got this um, yellow kind of bounced throughout this field. And if you're able to do that and it looks natural and good, then let's get with the red. So the red is gonna be, you know, um, really powerful in this picture. So I wanna make sure that you understand that it can't be polka dots, you know? You wanna make sure that you put a little cluster of a few here and then over here and it's gotta be broken up. There are a ton of them though, so, you know, you're gonna have to put a lot. All right, let's start. So we get our red here. I'm gonna pour a little bit of red. I've got the cadmium red medium hue. Um, if your red is um, not very bright, you can add some uh, a little bit of yellow to it. You don't wanna add white, because it'll turn it pink. But if you add too much yellow, then it will turn it orange. But these are kind of an orangish red, so um, I wouldn't be too worried. You can also add some of this ochre color, which I love. I love ochre. It's just like, I need it for every painting, so. If you've got ochre you can definitely use that too and it doesn't change the value of the color it just changes the tint a little bit um so anyway you could try using ochre if you'd like all right so our poppies um the larger the poppy the closer it is to you so the poppies down here where the woman's walking it are larger um there's some larger poppies in here because this is closest to the viewer and then these poppies over here are tiny they're just like sprinkles they're so tiny back there so um, we just need to get busy adding them. And the poppy is not a circle. There are no circles in this reference photo, okay? Uh, they are all like, they look like little like, uh, like butterfly wings, just totally irregular shapes. And you wanna use your brush like this and just kinda move it in all these different directions and ways. Pick up a darker red and then come in with some lighter reds. Make sure that you've got enough paint on your brush so that you're not creating um, dots, you know, that you can see through. So my poppies down here are bigger and they come all the way down like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some big ones um, like that. And I wanna do kind of clusters. Remember, you know, we don't want this to look like anything like a pattern, no patterns. So let's get some clusters in there. And in the center of these poppies, there are a few that are, um, They've got like that dark maroon color in, in the center. That's really pretty too. You can get that color by mixing brown with your red and it will create a really dark color. You can also add a little bit of blue to get like a purple. This is like a purplish brown. So there's some that have like this dark color in there. And I am not being very careful about where I put them. I just wanna make sure that there's no repeating pattern. So I see some big ones in here because these ones are closer. And then I'm gonna leave you know this area down here without any poppies, okay? Don't paint any poppies down there. Make sure you look at your reference. There's like a, 
a, a, a ridge here that has a lot of them. So I'm going to come in here with a little bit of my darker um, red and I want to make sure that I've got a lot of paint on my brush so that when I put the paint on there, um, and, and you can also turn your brush around like this in different directions to get different shapes. But um, I want to use a lot of paint in my brush so that when I put my paint on my canvas, I'm not creating like a fuzzy shapes. You know, like this right in here, like this fuzz. That's perfect for what we're doing over here because we want it to be soft under these poppies. But the poppies are not fuzzy. They have really definite shapes. They're just a lot of irregular shapes. So we want to make sure that we create uh, a lot of irregular but very visible shapes. No fuzzy um, kinds of things. No fuzzy like cloud type of things. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and add some more. And you can add as many poppies as you want. Okay, this is not a stressful thing. All right, you don't have to go crazy if you don't want to. It is totally up to you. Okay, um, if you are scared about ruining your picture with the poppies, don't worry. Once you get it on, if it's not working for you, just get a brush that's wet. Oops, got some paint on me. Get a brush uh, that's wet and you can just rub it like this. Look, rub it like that and it will take it right off. It might take some of the green off, but don't worry. You can just look, add some green. Okay, don't let painting make you afraid. It can, you can fix it, you can paint over it. All right, so um, if you are afraid when you paint, sometimes you can tell. You can tell that you were just so careful about where you put it that it didn't just come off your brush easily. And we want it to look like it was just easy. You know, you were confident and you were just able to paint freely without worrying too much about the look of it all. Okay, so I'm gonna keep continue to add poppies. And there are so many in this image. So um, you keep going. Like I said, um, how you know as com you know however you feel looks good on your picture. I actually really like the poppies, so I'm gonna keep going. And I'm gonna do this quickly because I know this video is getting quite long. I do want to add some of these poppies over here to break up all of this um, purple and yellow that we had. I actually have a neighbor across the cul-de-sac from me, two houses down. Her entire front yard is poppies. Um, she doesn't have a grass. She just has poppies. <laughs> and it's, they're so pretty right now. There's probably 10 zillion poppies in her front yard. And they blew over the fence into the neighbor's yards um, at some point in the last year. So now all of our neighbors all have poppies growing on their yard in their yards on the other side of the fence. So it's kind of magical. Poppies are taking over at my house. We're two houses down, so we haven't had any yet, but I'm hoping the wind will blow this way. Okay, so I'm going to have my flowers come down this way because that's the, you know, the shape of my hill. And then as they come down here, they just get smaller and smaller. So I'm going to um, bridge this here and add some. I'm actually going to add a little bit of yellow, just a tad of white to just brighten some of these in here. Okay, and I'm going to bridge these together. I will say that as you do your poppies, if it's weird looking to you and you're like, oh my gosh, like this isn't working, it doesn't look right, um, whoops, try adding more. <laughs> I know we're like, oh, we have to stop, it's not going to work. Sometimes, like right now, this feels a little bit scattered and weird. You got to add more. Just keep going, keep going. And you also can take a moment to put your brush down and to look at your reference photo. And when I mean look, I mean really look for 60 seconds. You know, um, it helps to touch where you see the poppies. That hand-eye, like, you know, connection where you can, like, touch where they are in your reference photo and then add them to your picture really helps. Okay? All right, so I'm going to add a few. I, I'm just going to keep going here. I, I really want to add more. Um... Of course, you can stop when you want, and you've got your reference photo to give you directions. So I'm probably going to stop here in a few seconds so that we can move on with the rest of the painting. And um, 
you guys can keep going as much as you like, okay? So um, what we're gonna do now, and actually, you know, actually at this part, this is a really bright red and it's pretty, but I do see up in here there's a softness that I do not have in this picture, and I would like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some ochre to my red and some white and some yellow, and that's gonna create a soft, uh, a soft reddish kind of color that isn't um, so vivid and bright. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna kind of dance some of that in like this. Oh yes, that's much better. Okay, I'm actually gonna lighten that even more, adding more white, adding more yellow. I really like the look of that color variation in here. Very nice. Okay, yep. So now I'm gonna come in here like this and add that lighter color um, in the areas where I have my other flowers. And that distinction in the colors really makes them pop. And that's really important that we have that, especially um, far away like that. Because you know what? The flowers up close would be brighter and more vivid than the flowers that are far away. And I noticed that in my picture that the poppies that are far away have turned kind of an orangish color. And that's really important that we get that on our canvas because that is what's going to create the depth. Already this is starting to look uh, better to me with this lighter orange. Orangish red kind of back there coming forward. Okay, so I'm going to keep adding that in here. And then, uh, so let's see, I think I'm just going to add a little bit more of this orange. I'm gonna check my phone, make sure we're still recording, and then I'll show you how to paint this beautiful figure with the umbrella. All right, guys, so let's get this picture finished. We get to do the um, figure here with the umbrella now. I've got my poppies on and I'm happy with that. So now uh, let's talk a little bit about doing a figure. Now, if you don't want to do this part, you can uh, just paint this in green and you've got this lovely landscape. Um, oh, you know what? I do want to show you real fast how to highlight these trees back here. So get some green and some yellow. Here, let me move this back over here. Um, green and yellow. It needs to be dark, but uh, it, not so, not as dark as this. And what you're going to do is you're just going to very gently dance some of this on top of that dark green. Not completely covering it, but we need to cover some of those brush strokes because there's not enough paint on there, you see? And adding that secondary color to this is going to really give them some depth. Um, and that's really important. Okay, so I'm just going on top maybe on the outside of uh, some of these and adding a little bit of that lighter green. Also some down here because the branches don't just, you know, come out to the sides, they come towards us also. So I'm kind of putting that on there like this. And this one just a little bit. I actually want some lower on this, this guy here. And then over here. Just giving this tree a little bit of a highlight. And this paint will dry a little bit darker. And, um, just kind of tapping that in. Do you see that? I'm just kind of tapping that kind of around there and that just creates a nice warm depth to this. I can also add some highlights in here to the outside of my branches, giving them some really light green branches on the outside there. Okay. Maybe some in the center because like I said the branches are coming forward towards us also. Sometimes when we paint trees we only paint like the outsides but there's branches going that way and this way. So we want to add some highlights in here like this. And that will give it a nice round shape. See how round that looks now? All right so okay we're done with that. We can fuss over that but you know what we gotta be done. Uh, so let's work on the figure here. The figure guys is very very loose. This is impressionism. This doesn't have to be uh, perfect. So when if you think, oh my gosh, I can't paint a person, um, 
you're really not painting the person's details. You're just kind of painting the general shape. So first thing we're going to do is this really beautiful umbrella that is this bright blue color. And I'm just going to pick up this turquoise because I love it. I'm going to add a little bit of white uh, to make it brighter. And we're going to come in here and I'm still using the same brush. Um, because with impressionistic paintings, you can use the same brush. And I'm just kind of twirling it around to get the shape of the umbrella, those little corners there. And you know what? It's not perfect. And that's all right. Totally all right. I'm going to get that in there. See that bright blue? So pretty. Okay. Her dress is a lavender color. So I'm going to pick up some of this lavender that I was using for the field. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paint her little dress. And... Make sure I use lots of paint to really cover that white. And uh, her dress is, you know, she's walking through the field. So she's got some grass in front of her. So the bottom of her dress, see how there's like grass growing in front? You want that. Make sure you don't like bring it down, like have a little circle, at the, you know, half circle at the bottom, like the bottom of her dress, because that's not what it's going to look like. She's got grass growing in front of her. Okay, so on her skirt, I'm going to get like a bluish brown maybe um, with that lavender and add some shadows in here. See that? Just some shadows in her skirt. Done. Okay, now I'm going to pick up that same bluish gray and I'm going to do her arm. Um, you know, I'm going to add more blue to that because I want to be able to see it in the field. So here, I'm going to add a little bit more blue. but not so much blue that it matches the umbrella. Just like a darker blue here. Okay, so her shirt comes up like this. Now her arm is up holding the umbrella right here. Okay, so now she's got this black scarf on. If you've got black paint, you can use black paint. If you don't have black paint, you can mix burnt umber with blue. You usually would use ultramarine blue to get a black, but I'm just going to kind of see what happens when I mix turquoise blue with this brown, this burnt umber. It, it gives me a nice color. I'm going to add a little bit of red to this and it's going to make it even darker. See that? Yeah, we almost got like a black. Okay, so um, I'm going to do a little shawl here. She's got like this little black shawl that comes down. Now, am I spending a lot of time on this figure? Nope. I'm not stressed about uh, it looking perfect because she's kind of like lost among the flowers. You know, she's just kind of this figure that's moving through this field. And um, I don't need to spend too much time on this. Now, I'm, I am going to add a little shadow to the bottom of her arm there. And I'm going to add a little shadow to the end of her um, um, sleeve on this side. So you see that shadow there. Her scarf does come all the way down. It's quite low. It goes down in front of her um, skirt there. And then her hair it looks like it's uh, black. And it's behind her hat up here. So I'm going to paint that in. And then she's got this little black detail on her hat. that I'm going to just dab in there. Okay. While that dries, I'm going to get my darker color that I just mixed with a little bit of this teal and I'm going to add this shadow inside of this umbrella because this top portion of the umbrella, you know how an umbrella curls um, like a bowl, the top portion here is in shadow. So I'm going to add a little bit of shadow in there. It's still a little bit wet so my paint's not wanting, it doesn't really want to stick right now but there, can you kind of see that? Just a little bit of shadow in there. Okay, now her hat is a, a warm yellow color, like a wheat color, so I do want to get my brush clean. And I'm going to pick up some of my yellow, some of my ochre, and some white to make that wheat color for her hat. And her hat is, you know, in bright sunlight. So I'm being really careful, guys, not to touch the black. Of course, you're going to wait until your black is dry to do this part. Um, so that it doesn't mix. So there's the top of her hat and the 
the like ribbon that goes around it and then the bottom of her hat there and then her skin color is <clears throat> in shadow there so it looks like a dark almond color so um skin color is um like reds red and ochre and yellow and white her skin is in shadow so i'm adding some of this um umber to this color and i'm just going to come in here underneath the hat and add this color very carefully i'm just going to add a little dab do you see that so now you have the skin color here <clears throat> And I'll pick up my canvas and bring it closer to you so you can see. The last thing I want to do is get my, uh, con actually it does look a lot like the skin color, like a brown, maybe like a lighter brown here, and do like a stick, the, what's that called? The um, umbrella pole coming out from the center of the umbrella into her hand. And I want to just add a little bit of a light tan color there and there to look like her hand. Okay, so I'm um, happy with that. Now I'm going to come back with some green because we did have to paint around this figure because I wanted to base that on for you. So I'm going to come in with some green and get those white sections covered. All right, so um, my green is kind of drying, but I'm just going to kind of see what is um, still wet. And then this is where I was going to paint the the um, child walking with her. It's the same concept, guys, just the little... Um, round face, the hair and the hat and the, the shirt, but that child is um, dancing in the, you know, field. So most of the child is covered. So I'm going to come in here with this green and kind of patch that over there. And I'm going to add texture there. And then I'm going to come in here um, in between her arm, add some green and in between the umbrella. Okay, so that it doesn't look like uh, we went back and painted her um, last, or, you know, painted her, um, painted the grass around her. We don't want it to look like that. I'm also going to come in here and add some, you know, grass in front of her skirt so it looks like she's walking um, in the field. All right, so let me bring this up close so you can see. See how loose that is, guys? Super loose. We don't want any big details for this, okay? So up close, this picture has so much texture. Let me, let me show you. There's so much texture in there, okay? But from far away, we get a completely different feel. And if you want, if your picture has these really hard dots in here and you want that softened, then you can go in there with this orangish color in here and just kind of dance that next to the red. And from a distance, it will give it a really nice um, softening so that when this picture is on the wall, it won't be, um, those dots won't be so hard. Okay. All right, guys. So uh, enjoy this process. This this impressionistic painting is so much fun to do. Don't overthink it. Um, just get the paint on. Remember that you can take it off. You can paint over it. All right. If you guys have any questions, I will talk to you at our um, Saturday um, meeting time. If you're not able to make that, then call me or text me anytime. Um, it, you know, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But uh, definitely, if you need help, send me a photo of your picture. Text it to me or email it to me. And I can give you some pointers. I've done that before with other students and it seems to have worked. And um, yeah, I'm, I think you guys are going to do an absolutely wonderful job with this. So I will talk to you guys soon. All right. Bye.